The power of mathematics is often to change one thing into another, to change geometry into language. Marcus du Sautoy. The power of mathematics is often to change one thing into another, to change sanity into insanity. Hey guys, so some of you are wondering, you know, Timo, what are you doing? Your exams are in 7 hours. Shouldn't you be studying or at least sleeping because it's 12.30? No, I want to make money. So now it's the 6th, 7th of October, which means that my further math paper is in the morning. So what should I be doing? I should be doing revision for one of the harder subjects. Especially in this beautiful island country that is Singapore. Should. The keyword is should. So what is mathematics? Mathematics is on another level of pain. The questions make you feel as though you are questioning your raison d'etre. What even is this? Now look at this question. Like what is this? They took x and 1 minus x and minus 1 and they just magically put an n minus 1 and move the n minus 1 here. And then here, they just magically make a 2 out of nowhere, like they just put minus 1 and then huh? this for 2 marks of course there are other questions which would be 6 or 7 marks but these are the kind of questions which you can really study for and if your wing can connect the dots then you are lucky but if not then you are just kind of stuck and there's another reason for it being hard it's just a Singapore education system in general so on average FMAT has one of the lowest distinction rates in the entire country while well, math and computing have an average of over 50% but the math has like a low 33% distinction rate. And now you look at this. This is apparently the A level results for British A levels. And apparently 74% of students got A for photo math. Why? And what's even better is that they can even pick the mods they want to pick. Not that they can pick classic mechanics or calculus, whatever is more manageable. But no, I have to learn all 12 chapters. Why? There's another thing that reminds my curious is how silly I was to underestimate the competition for the math. Like, okay, it makes sense that you're gonna be around the smartest people in the country fighting for what is a 30% distinction rate. But what I didn't realize is there's not only the smartest people in the country, but the smartest people in the entire continent. There are scholars from China, India, and wherever, and they all come here to take photo math. There are so much scholars, oh my goodness. Then talk about foreign talent. Like, there's so much foreign influx in my class that I'm the only one with two local parents. Like, how am I supposed to fend all these people who can very well be men's prodigies? Oh wait. Then again, can I really blame myself when I signed up for this in the first place? So even if you want to take for the math, the thing is that you have to pass a selection test, even if you do well for O-levels and you get A for both your E and A math. And from what I've heard, in other places it's even more difficult. Some of the questions they were for uni questions, somehow. What's funny is that after the test, I went back home and felt so dejected. That she started working on the backup subject because I thought I was so certain that I was going to fail for the math selection test. But somehow I passed by one mark and so I guess I'm staying. Okay, so initially, the reason I took for the math, because I was thinking of doing something engineering related. I thought, hmm, more math means better engineer. So yes, that would make sense. Let's go. Now though, the problem is that I've done so much math that I don't even feel like doing it anymore. Especially not on an engineering level. So the four content-based subjects, physics, for the math, math, and economics, the subject I most enjoy now is economics, which in this case is a humanities subject which is more public policy oriented than quantitative. Okay, so the key thing I have in general for math is that I try to squeeze everything into one sheet. So what happens is that whenever I do so much math, is that I tend to use so much full sheet paper that it's actually crazy. So what I thought is that I do this. You only see it clearly, but basically I split this paper into half and just pretend I'm writing on two sides of paper on the side of one. Does that make sense? Yeah, so essentially on one sheet of paper I'm writing like four pages worth of content. Okay, you look at the thing and think that oh, that's the optics. Seems that like I'm doing quite well. But no. If you look at this practice paper which includes every single topic, I wrote four pages worth of crap answers. My corrections was exactly the same size. So you're probably wondering, what other subject I was intending to do? And if you look at the quote earlier, I was intending to do geography. 
In fact, my further math file even has a sticker called I love geography on it. Talk about patriotism. The thing is, I'm actually good for it. I'm good at geography and I have a medal to show for it. And I'm not even taking the mini version of it. Which is kind of surprising, really. And I think the double math stream is that you can only hit one humanities. So I took Econs because it's basically human geography anyway. Even though I very much like the idea of learning about volcanoes out of grade. But you know how there are those YouTubers that promote like Nebula and Curiosity stream? Yeah, I actually signed up for it. And I just watched their documentaries or whatever when I had nothing else to do. So yeah, screw Netflix. Who needs that when you can have blockchain? Okay, anyway, so of time right now. I've got to go back to my favorite crowbar and find some direction in my life using vectors. But before I leave, hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully, I do well for the exam in 7 hours time. And if not, who cares? Because...